it is very difficult to achieve in a sustainable manner the complete uh, removal of meat. What are the chickens that, eating? What are the, what are the chickens eating? Grains, which is imported. Okay, so there we go. So, so, so you're importing grain. So the Jamaica are importing grains to feed chickens in Jamaica. Rastafarians are an interesting group, but Rastafarians also are a very small portion of the population. Let's are they affluent? Some may be affluent, some may not. How are they affording to be plant-based if it's more expensive? Do you still believe that economics is a justification, no matter how affluent or non-affluent a country is, is a justification to violate human rights, like enslave people? You are equating the rights of chickens to the rights of formerly enslaved people. On the table we have, why aren't you vegan? Do you know what a vegan is or? Well, my understanding of a vegan is someone who does not eat meat. That's part of it. That would be part of a practice. It's, it's a principle where, you, where one believes that uh, animals should not have their negative rights violated, sentient animals. So you wouldn't use products that exploit them in, uh, for fur or leather or entertainment, things like this. Have you considered this before? This... So I have examined having more uh plant having a more plant-based diet but rather than fully adopting to the whole course of being vegan so my background i come from a, a small country a small island developing state and what sometimes happens is that uh, meals that include meat are uh, cheaper cheaper for consumption and as a consequence of that that has influenced sex uh, successive generations of people and their diets as well in Jamaica. So uh, there are those considerations as well. Uh, additionally, as uh, again, a small country, which has part of its economy based on agriculture, particularly with uh, the growing of meat-based products or growing of animals to support meat, the creation of meat-based products. This uh, idea of consumption of meat is not only for sustenance, but it's also important for the economies of these developing states as well. So when you're, when you're thinking about this, this, this topic, um, you, you spoke about um, it being cheaper, cheaper to in, in your particular country to produce animal products than it is for plant products. Yes. I would contest that whether that's the case firstly, but secondly, I would also introduce something like, would you factor the animal's rights into that equation or was it, would it just be the monetary? Uh, well, it's not only looking at the monetary component, it's also looking at the livelihoods perspective okay. uh, as well, because you see the, the challenge that it oftentimes happens with small countries is that they are unable to get certain economies of scale. So if we were to only convert to a, a certain lifestyle or have a certain economy, it would lead to further dependence on other international uh, actors as well, or other uh, companies, and also depending on imports as well. And as a consequence of that, you're talking about a reduction or a, in uh, balance of so balance of payment difficulties as well. You're also looking at uh, a lot of uh, rural livelihoods being disrupted mm -hmm. as well. Of course, yeah. So there are those considerations as well. Of course, there are considerations. My question to you would be like, would the livelihoods um, being disrupted by a certain uh, agricultural people in your country trump the rights of the animals being violated for those products? I think the rights of any individual or animal is extremely important. What I'm also considering as well, and looking at it from the, the perspective of uh, a government, yeah. is that a government primarily is responsible for its citizens' rights first and foremost, and also their well-being as well, first and foremost. So even though animal rights are absolutely important, given the context where governments are responsible for the rights of their citizens as well, then they also have an obligation to ensure that there is as minimum disruption to their livelihoods as possible. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding the important point that you have raised about the humane way of how uh, animals are treated. How are the animals uh, treated in order to be uh, killed for food in your country? Well, it depends on uh, different industries. I'm not particularly versed with the meat industry. You could probably have like a simple idea of what happens to animals in order for us to 
eat them, yeah, or to use their bodies for sale and things like this. Okay. So you, were they raised on a farm, they're fed plant products in order to get them to a certain size, and then they're sent to a slaughterhouse to be sometimes stunned first and then decapitated and chopped up into little pieces and sold in supermarkets, yeah? So my question to you, because you've, you've raised some, some points here, livelihood was one, and also the... Food security. F food security. Well, food security is one because obviously <laughs> the UN uh, brought out this report saying that if we keep eating animals, it's, it's, it's harming our food security. It's like putting our food security in jeopardy. So the raising animals for food is actually cuts against this food security argument anyway. But from a, from a rights perspective, if we had humans in place of these animals, would you think that the livelihood argument would justify doing what we do to animals for food to human beings? I think that's an interesting perspective. Uh, that has been raised. The challenge with uh, those uh, uh, or that sort of framing of the narrative is that uh, it still doesn't reconcile with the fact that at a local level from a small island developing state perspective, mm -hmm. it is very difficult in a state to achieve in a sustainable manner mm -hmm. the complete uh, removal of meat. So for example, uh, information that is even supported in Jamaica shows mm. that a lot of products, for example, that benefit those persons who are marginalized or those persons who are poor in Jamaica, uh -huh. that is, are heavily meat-based as well. And given... Really? Yes. Yes. Because I know there's a big vegan community in Jamaica as well. And not that, as large as it is as you may think it is. Are they uh, affluent, the, the, the plant-based community in uh, Jamaica. I know it's called Rastafarian. Is that part of their uh, culture is to consume plant products only? So Rastafarians are an interesting group, but Rastafarians also are a very small portion of the population. Let's are they affluent? Uh, I think that you have uh, varying groups that are represented and, and very individuals. Some may be affluent, some may not be. Okay. So, so I want the ones that, that aren't affluent, how are they affording to be plant-based if it's more expensive? Well, you have to look at the nature of these communities as well. Some of these communities are subsistence driven as well, but uh, more looking at a macro level, at a countrywide level, mm. there are, for example, certain industries that are key to the economy, such as the chicken industry in Jamaica, where Jamaica is completely self-sufficient in chicken. Removing uh, that industry altogether, you're talking about uh, significant unemployment and also undermining the argument of food security. So I'm not looking at just food security broadly speaking, but I'm looking at certain key industries yeah. that we have. And I think that's really the, the crux of the matter that even though it is important that as much as possible, we can try and incorporate more plant-based uh, products into our diet, because I think it's also healthier as well. And I, and I think that it is also something that should be encouraged. I think though, in order to be practical and realistic, I don't see the complete removal of these products being feasible given the nature of how countries' economies are set up. So you say you're talking about what's feasible and what's practically able to be achieved, right? In principle, right? Uh, because obviously there was a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of things that have happened in history that have, have been uh, human rights violations. And obviously they've been a very part, uh, they've been uh, embedded into the economy and we can think of a few that ruined industries because we had to abolish them. That wasn't really a good justification to keep some moral abomination continuing. So my, uh, my question to you is, uh, I know in practically it might seem like a bit of an infeasible option right now because it's so ingrained into these countries, right? But I'm asking you, is it, is it morally justified to do this to, to animals, to the animals, to the individuals? And if you believe it is because of this economics argument, would it be morally justified if you replace the, the animals with human beings? So I want to see if you have a... I'm doing a consistency test, basically. No, well, you see, the thing is, that's not necessarily the real crux of the question as well, because we also have to look at uh, whether that can actually be done in reality. And let's look at it uh, from the perspective of how states interact with each other. Is it moral, for example, for a country to try and achieve self-sufficiency, but... Uh, because of international circumstances, that self-sufficiency is undermined by international actors. Because if, we, if we're looking at being, for example, completely 
vegan as well. You're talking about continued dependence on international actors and also continued in, uh, dependence on imports from said countries as well. Why is that? Why is that a problem? Because you see, the countries are so small. You're not going to be able to achieve certain certain levels of self sufficiency as well. And even if you are going to be able to try and achieve that level of self sufficiency, it's going to have to have some level of importation to support that. So as well. it feels like you're making an empirical claim here. Um, do you have any evidence that you? You can't that a country like Jamaica cannot be self-sufficient on uh, plant agriculture. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If you look at our food import bill, that was actually broken down beautifully in a few articles published by a former permanent secretary in our local newspaper. It showed step by step what are the biggest imports as well, and the biggest imports for Jamaica. You're talking about certain grains. You're talking about rice. You're talking about all of these different imports because it's simply cheaper to be produced overseas as well. And if you're going to completely have the adoption of a vegan-based lifestyle, you have to go and replace that with something. What are the chickens eat? That, what, are the, what are the chickens eat? Grains, which is imported. Okay, so there we go. So, so, so you're importing grain. So the Jamaica are importing grains to feed chickens in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So per calorie, the chicken, if you're eating chickens per calorie, you're going to be eating per calorie more grain because the chickens are eating grain. So, so they're importing grain to feed animals. So that's a that, the cost they're carrying from importing that grain is insufficient is is a is a bad it's a bad use of resources anyway so if it, so what's the argument that um if they weren't using animal agriculture in, in in jamaica it wouldn't free up a bunch of land because the data is there on that and if you're familiar with joseph Poor's research we could free up 75 percent of the earth's farmland if we all adopted a vegan diet because we just need less land to grow food for animals and feed and grazing land I'm saying, what's the, where is the, the empirical data showing that if you removed animals from Jamaica and just had plant agriculture, they couldn't be self-sufficient? But let's look at a per capita basis in terms of the consumption of meat as well. On a per capita basis, Jamaica and the Caribbean as a whole produces a very small portion of meat that is consumed in the world. And if you were to adopt, for example, or if larger countries were, or more persons or more consumers in larger countries were to adopt that lifestyle, then you can, uh, in my view, uh, tangibly achieve more in more meat no tangibly achieve more reduction in the consumption of meat if you saw more larger countries also uh taking responsibility as 100 well. percent. you brought up jamaica i am talking about because do you live here in the uk i study here in the uk you study okay but i'm i'm i talk about worldwide but you brought up jamaica so we thought i thought, no, well, I, I thought no, i'd talk about well, jamaica why i brought up jamaica is that you just under just understanding the that certain things that may work, for example, in larger countries is a lot more difficult to be implemented I in smaller countries 100%. because of the True. How, how, how the population... And I would be more looking at UK, America, yeah. Australia, Europe first. And trust me, that's why I do most of my campaigning. I don't go to Jamaica to no, campaign. No, no, no. I, un I, I do most of my campaigning it, 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 here it, it, in the UK. And I think, yeah, there's more culpability for these... Because uh, people do fo follow... I don't know. It's just more affluent countries have, I believe, more of a responsibility, and they do have the faculties to change, and they tend to be more exploitative of uh, just animals and resources generally than you know the rest of the world. So I agree with you there. But what would be the argument for? Do you, do you still believe that economics is a justification, no matter how affluent or non-affluent a country is, is a justification to violate human rights? I would ask you, like enslaved people. If I was going to say, well, you know what? She's not practical now. We need these people to do this and we can't really pay them. I'm going to exploit them, enslave them, and maybe we even eat them. Because that's what is exactly like, if we're going to make an analogy, it's exactly what's happening to so, animals. So just if I understand you clearly, you are equating the rights of chickens to enslave the rights of formerly enslaved people. So basically, I'm, I'm saying... them as on par with each other? I'm not equating humans and animals. Um, I know we're all clearly different beings. But what I'm saying is, would would... I want to know, um, would, it, would the economics argument justify doing what we do to chickens, um, to human beings? But would, as, would... as you have just shared, because we're not equating humans and animals because they're very different, it is, would not be fair to draw parallels comparing humans and okay. animals in this so, case. So may I ask, my, my question to you, my next to question, okay. so my, my next question would be, what would be the trait that, def, that separates us, that, that, that justifies doing it to chickens and not humans? What would be the, the morally relevant trait so obviously we, you're thinking that we are so different that we have a trait difference. And I want to know what that trait is that's, that makes it justified to do it to chickens because obviously we share sentience, we share consciousness in common. So it's wrong to abuse animals, they're conscious beings, right? So what, what is this, this trait that's, that separates one being bad, enslaving people, but it's okay to enslave and kill chickens. So I want to know what that is. 
before you leave, if you've got an answer for that. I think humans and animals are, are fundamentally different. And I do take the point that uh, there should be more, uh, or I should say, less uh, abhorrent ways, for example, of uh, raising meat as well. So I don't uh, support, for example, uh, farming practices in certain countries, for example, in the United States with how they, with how they raise chickens and such. But I am also looking at the fact, and I think it just goes down to what is feasible and what is right. I'm just looking for the trait difference between humans and animals that justifies r robbing the rights of animals and not humans. That's all I was looking for. And not what I'm saying is that I just think that they're so fundamentally different. And what, it, it just, just what is that difference? Because if you nail that difference for me, what I'll do then, I'll, I'll, I'll just apply that difference to human beings. If you say it's intelligence, they're less intelligent. I'll say, what if the humans were less intelligent? And then I'll say, is it then justified to do what we do to animals, to human beings? And if, it, if you can't find that difference... But then, then the foundation of the, the discussion would be flawed because, uh, uh, again, a human and an animal are two separate entities, two separate beings as well. So you're saying species dif different because we're a different species, no, no, it's no, okay? No, not necessarily only uh, different species as well. But what I'm saying is that it would not be fair to draw comparisons or parallels between these two these two bodies. As Why well. not? We can compare two different things, though. I really do. Have I know. To I know you have to go. But anyway, that's it. That's but, that. That would be where the the discussion would be getting interesting because you, you can obviously compare a, a cat to a dog. You can mm -hmm. compare a dog to an elephant because they share, they've got eyes, they've got brains. You can compare two different things. No, I understand. And you don't have that. to equate an uh, apple to an orange to compare the two to no, say I, they're both fruit. I can understand. I can understand that entirely. But after a Really nice. Oh, thank, thank you for sitting down. I appreciate it, mate. Next time. Ta. Where that sort of ended was uh, trying to find the difference between humans and animals, where economics would justify doing what we do to chickens to people. And that's where it was leading. And um, once you can spell out that difference, I, I would be happy to, to know what that difference is. Is it, is it intelligence? Is it the fact that... Because that's where the crux of the argument is, actually. Because um, these feasible economic arguments and whether it's practical, uh, they don't hold up when you put humans in place of animals because we wouldn't accept that for humans. And I want to know what the morally relevant difference is. So.